All right, today we're doing an update on our 1993 Toyota Coaster. It's been some time up at Evergreen RV near us, uh, having some new things installed, uh, and just everything in general freshened up. But yeah, so if you haven't seen the previous video, this is a retired disaster response vehicle from Japan. Um, it's a really interesting setup, not something you see too often. Uh, rear wheel drive, turbo diesel, it has the 1HDT turbo diesel, which is the same one that came in the Land Cruiser 80 series and on. Um, it's a really famous engine from Toyota, probably one of the best that has ever come out of Toyota. Uh, due to sheer reliability and a combination of that and power. Um, this has really good power delivery, it's plenty for US roads and it drives really, really well. So yeah, pretty simple on the outside. You can see it's a fairly short camper, it's around 21 feet. Um, so not quite the same size as a Class A US style camper. Um, but still a decent size nonetheless, it's a bus chassis. Go into the driver's seat here. You can see everything in here is pretty clean, door jam looks good. You've got a lot going on on the dashboard. Um, this has 14,000 kilometers on the odometer, so super low mileage, especially for one of these diesels. Air conditioning and general uh, HVAC controls here. You have these lights are indicating where the hydraulic jacks are at. We'll get to those later. You also have a switch for your automatic door, which actually I may go engage that now. So you can see exactly how that works. So the side door here, it's kind of a trademark of the coaster, the way that it opens out into the side. Um, you can flip a switch down here, flip it into automatic. So now I can't shut it because it is an automatic mode. But if I go over here, go ahead and flip it into accessory mode, then click close. You can see it pulls that door shut. No problem. So that's a pretty cool feature to have. Then on this side you have a double DIN, you've got a cassette player and a standard radio. This radio does only go up to 90 FM, uh, that's just how Japanese radios are. But that can easily be changed out for a US style radio. You have a 24 volt battery system, so you can see that's labeled on the cigarette lighter here. But general controls are normal, you've got your blinker over here windshield wipers, and you also have your engine brake lever down here. Um, that's a pretty nice thing to have in something this size. You don't have to worry about wearing down the brakes going down a steep or long incline or decline. No smoking sticker there. That's an automatic transmission. Uh, I believe it's a four. All right, my memory card filled up for a second there, but we are back now. Um, so we can go ahead and start it up. And you can see the glow plug sh light shuts off immediately. Starts on the first crank every time. That light in the bottom is just for the emergency brake. You can see I let that down, it goes off. It sounds great. Idle's really smooth. There's not too much rattle in the interior here. AC works great. You've got your controls up here for that. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Um, I'll go ahead and open the rear door. Super easy. And going in the back here, you can see we've got a couple of things that we've removed. Um, the old refrigerator was not working. We replaced it with a brand new one that's right over there. And then this is the generator that came in the side of the camper. Um, it's not a standard RV generator. It was stored right behind that panel there. Uh, this would have come with a different generator when it was new, but this one appears to have been swapped out with more of a 
sort of house generator or just a standard um, standard style generator. Not quite meant for an RV and it wasn't hooked up properly so we just took it out and it'll just be sitting in here um, for the future owner to do whatever they please with. But yeah, you can see in the back here, it's kind of an open concept. You've got four seats in the front and your engine is right under that panel there, which we'll get to in a sec. But back here, you've got sort of a two couch setup and then these uh, futon style um, backrests that'll fold into the center there. Um, pretty easy to set up a bed in the middle here, no problem. And then up here on the ceiling, you have an AC unit. So let's see. We're all plugged in, so it should work just fine. You can hear that blowing, and it does blow cold. It's a pretty cool system. Comes in handy in the warmer days. Um, back here, you have a vent that is connected to. There's a fan in here, so you can open these little slats in here, and then you've got this fan can blow in or out, depending on the needed purposes, and you control that with this little switch right here. Go ahead and shut that. And then you've got your sink here, that works, no problem. Don't have the water pump on, so it's just kind of squirting water, but you get the idea. Then fridge down here, brand new, cold, works great. And then you have your water storage under here. Um, this panel is easier for just checking what your levels are. Uh, the best way to get to them is through the panel or the hatch in the rear of the camper. But yeah, then you have this whole control panel here, which this shows kind of your voltage right here. And then you have a light switch for the lights throughout in here. These are all LEDs. And then it controls that fan on the side, but pretty much everything else has been disconnected. This would have gone straight to the generator, but that generator is not with this camper. So that's about it for the interior. Actually, before I forget, we will take a look at the engine compartment. So, this latch here, and then this latch on the front here. There you can see, it's all pretty clean under there. Turbo diesel, inline six, one HDT. Really well maintained. Um, there seems to be no major signs of wear and you also, I mean, you have such low mileage that it has plenty of life left. Going out here around the back. So this panel would have stored the generator. It's now empty um, and it's pretty well sealed off. We did install a shore power hookup. It didn't have that originally, but um, Evergreen RV installed this little panel here. So we've got the lead, and then it just connects to a normal US style extension cord or plug. And under here, we've got a little bit of storage, but mostly just some controls. Um, we've got some spare parts thrown around in here, oil filters and such. But here is the controller for your hydraulic jacks, which we do have a video showing how those work. But you can see next to the mud flaps on either side, got little jacks straight up and away. Um, then your water tanks are here, both fresh water and waste water. And then there's the back side of the refrigerator right there. You also have a little toolkit in the side. Yeah, that's about it for under there. And it's a pretty cool setup how it kind of takes the ladder with it. And then speaking of the ladder, we can just see how far up I can get without falling back down. But you can see the top here has a bunch of wood panels, kind of a deck. Um, you can you know, set up some chairs up here, watch the sunset. You can use it as storage, tie it to the rails on the sides. It's a really nice setup. It's really well put together. The welds are clean. So pretty cool and not something you see on all coasters. 
and then the air suspension sticker here. So this does have air suspension all the way around, which it, as you'll see in the test drive video, it rides so nice, so smooth. And then in the side here, you've got your diesel tank. But on the other side, let's see, I believe it was behind this. Yeah, here you, so you have a fuel fill cap. So that would have been a fuel tank for the generator. Uh, but now that the generator is no longer there, that tank can be sort of any purpose. You could use it as a secondary diesel tank or potentially, you know, a uh, generator set up in the future if you want to reconnect all of that. There is a lot of potential for that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this is our 1993 Toyota Coaster. Really, really clean, really unique setup. Not something you'll ever see in the U.S. again, I imagine, so definitely one of a kind. Um, so yeah, you can find more information on our website, jdmcarandmotorcycle.com. Thank you for watching.